next guest, you know her well. You've been probably seeing her out on the campaign trail, hearing a lot about her in the media. She is running for governor of our great Granite State. Kelly Ayot joins the program again. Kelly, thank you so much for calling into the Grace Curley Show today. Uh, Great to be with you, Caroline. Thank you. We have a lot of news to get to, Kelly. So let's do it. First of all, news from your campaign this morning. I saw it in my inbox. You announced a veterans coalition. Very exciting. A lot of great people uh, in our state are part of that coalition. Your husband's a veteran. Your daughter is serving at the Air Force Academy. Um, What more can be done from our corner office for veterans in New Hampshire? There is a lot of work that can be done, but what are your legislative priorities on that front and Congrats on the coalition. Uh, Thanks so much, Caroline. You know, we have over 120 vets on our coalition, and then many others are signing up. And, you know, we need to make – I want New Hampshire to be the most veteran-friendly state in the nation. That is so important because our men and women in uniform, they've done so much for us to defend our freedom, our Constitution, and our way of life. And so for New Hampshire, number one, uh, you know, we're going to make sure – that we keep our advantage in terms of protecting people's constitutional rights, including our veterans. Uh, we're also going to make sure uh, that if you're a veteran, like you're serving and you get out of the military, that we find you a good job in New Hampshire. And one of the ways we can do that is a lot of our veterans have amazing skills, whether it's welding or whether it's fixing airplanes or whether it's flying an airplane or um, they serve in the, the, for example, the military police and we can be the state that t- allows them, instead of having to go and get separate licensing, to take those skills and translate it right into licensing in our state so they can go right into jobs. So I want to be number one on friendly on that and make it easy for our veterans getting out and their families. Uh, to me, that's so important. And then we have a veterans campus that's actually being established in New Hampshire in Franklin, New Hampshire. Uh, the Governor Sununu has a uh, put some federal resources into that, and then also Easter Seals of New Hampshire and many veterans groups. It's going to be a place where there's affordable housing for veterans, mm. where housing, uh, where veterans can get support, uh, where they can ha- you know, be there with their fellow veterans. It's going to have athletic facilities. It's amazing. So as governor, I'm certainly going to champion that, too. It's going to be a place and a haven for veterans, and I think it'll be unique in the country. Well, I can hear the excitement in your voice talking about it, and I know it's it's personal to you. In fact, your husband, which I thought was really sweet, so I wanted to <laughs> to read it. Your husband, who's a retired uh, Air Force Lieutenant Colonel, he wrote on on your part of the Veterans Coalition. He said Kelly understands the issues facing veterans and military families because she has lived it. I know that she will work every day to make New Hampshire the most veteran friendly state in the nation. That is so sweet. Your husband putting out a a oh, statement of support. He's sweet. You know we. <laughs> Caroline, we actually got married right before 9-11. And so we were on our honeymoon when September 11th happened. He had gotten out of the active duty. He was an A-10 pilot out of the active duty, and he'd gotten into the guard. And he, he uh, you know, we, when our country got hit like that and attacked, we got home from our honeymoon, and he literally deployed to the Middle East. And so I, um, you know, uh, he's what he's done is phenomenal, but, mo- you know, mostly our you know, all of our veterans, the families that they've been impacted to when their loved ones are away. So I really appreciate the family perspective as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's no one better to execute on an issue than someone who's lived it. So not speaking of not so sweet news regarding veterans, Massachusetts, which you've made really part of your platform, it's made national head fl- headlines. You've said you, we are one election away from becoming Massachusetts. I think this uh, New Hampshire and Massachusetts mixed audience listening right now would definitely agree and attest to that. Um, and there is the recent news, and I'm, I want to get your take on it, that veterans who are coming to Massachusetts next month for the big Army-Navy game, which is a patriotic display, American football, who doesn't love it, at Gillette Stadium, they have actually been kicked out of hotel rooms because the illegal immigrant crisis has gotten so bad here in the state of Massachusetts, Maura Healy having to, to declare a state of emergency. I mean, it's just unfathomable and sickening that veterans and military families are being put last while these uh, illegal people are being put first. What is your take on this, Kelly? And what will you do to ensure that this lunacy does not happen in our great state. 
Yeah, Caroline, you know, first of all, like you hit the theme there. Don't mash it up. That's what I want to make sure never happens to New Hampshire. (laughs) It's outrageous what has happened. Our veterans should come first. They should have priority always. And to think that illegal immigrants are taking hotel rooms that our veterans should have, you know, right this weekend, Army is playing Air Force. And so when when Army plays Navy, it's a big deal. It's a big game. Our veterans love to come to it. And so it's just crazy, really. And so in New Hampshire, you know, Governor Healy, he she's been a sanctuary promoter. And no sanctuary cities in New Hampshire. Uh, no sanctuary policies. Uh, we're going to defend the law. Uh, those, those that are here illegally come to New Hampshire, but no illegal immigrants. I mean, to me, it's just when you think about it, uh, what's happening, uh, this crisis that, that they've had, the you know, state of emergency that Massachusetts has had to cl- declare, at the heart of it is because there's been these sanctuary policies. Mm-hmm. And, and obviously, President Biden has not enforced the border. I mean, it's just a mess. Both the southern and the northern border. We have a northern border with Canada that we have, uh, you know, an influx of illegal immigrants. And that is an issue that I think needs to be addressed as well. And I know Governor Sununu is focusing on it, too. Kelly, there was there's breaking news literally every single day to prove the truth that you're discussing on this program right now about how sanctuary policies have consequences. Open borders have consequences. We are seeing it. We are living it. But your Democrat opponents in this race, and it's so mind boggling to me how they just want to uh, pretend reality doesn't exist. They have called you names for calling truth uh, out about yes. how there's a fentanyl pipeline that comes from Lawrence and Low. I mean, they've even gone as far to call you a racist when there is story after story every single day proving that there is indeed a fentanyl pipeline that goes from the southern border to Massachusetts into New Hampshire. And could you just talk more about the evidence that you've seen on the campaign trail going to the northern border, talking to families who have lost loved ones to fentanyl? Well, it's it's really unbelievable. It wasn't too long ago there was an arrest in Lawrence where they interdicted enough fentanyl to kill a half million people. And I know... A bunch of that's coming to New Hampshire. We know that. I hear that from law enforcement. There have been many arrests in that pipeline. And, you know, the far left, what they do basically is uh, when, when they can't win the argument, they call you racist. And that's really what's happened uh, in this. I'm just telling people the facts. I'm actually a former murder prosecutor, a former attorney general, and I talk to our law enforcement. I know what is happening. In fact, I went up to Pittsburgh, New Hampshire. I talked to the law enforcement there. I went up to visit uh, a woman who has a farm on the border right there. She was telling me about the uh, the legal drugs that they were being dropped on her property, the illegal immigrants coming over. She, she wants to stop it. She wants enforcement of the border, which to me obviously seems like common sense. But I, I really, the policies on the left, when, when they disagree with you, that they call you names. Mm-hmm. But it's not going to stop me from just telling it like it is. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. A story uh, on Boston 25 today, a foreign feud- fugitive found living in state provided housing down on Cape Cod. And of course, we had the convicted murderer who was found in our state up in uh, Rye, New right. Hampshire. So uh, this stuff is happening all over the place. Switching gears real quick before I have to let you go from public safety to our pocketbooks, okay? Because this is an issue of concern for this audience. Again, there's a comparison to be made here. A news story out this week. This is newsy too. Uh, Massachusetts has now fallen to the 46th worst state in America. I don't want to say best state because they're four states away from being dead last um, in terms of business taxes and a tax, a, a business healthy business tax climate. We are number six. Okay, so there's a huge right. difference between us and our neighbors. How are you going to protect that difference? And then shine some light on your Democrat opponent for those who aren't uh, familiar with where Joyce Craig and the Democrats stand on New Hampshire's tax uh, laws and incentives. Well, Caroline, you hit, you hit it. Uh, New Hampshire has the most economic advantage here in New England, and frankly, six in the nation. And by the way, you know, uh, what, what's happening is, like, just, just so your listeners understand, Governor Maura Healey endorsed one of my Democratic opponents in this race, uh, Joyce Craig, who's the mayor of Manchester. When, when she was asked, uh, you know, what do you, about business taxes, 
She's like, well, I don't know. I need to think about it. Um, oh, well, yeah. guess what? We're not we're not going to increase business taxes in New Hampshire. We're going to we're not going to think about it. Yeah. No, we're not going to think. About, you don't need to hear me think about it. We're not going to increase the taxes. And and so you see what's happening in Massachusetts. She's refusing to answer. Well, how, where do you stand? Do you do you kind of align yourself with your Massachusetts mentor, for example, on the on the millionaires tax that is causing lots of folks to leave Massachusetts and come to New Hampshire. Welcome to New Hampshire. We have no income tax, no sales tax, no estate taxes, and you know we have business a business friendly state. So and and also we protect your constitutional rights. So that's my sale. <laughs> so feel free to move here, but please vote Republican. <laughs> Correct. Okay. okay yeah. If you move here, you have to understand it's because the conservative policies that we have, what we have. So vote conservative. <laughs> yeah, you're coming in to live free or die state for a reason. You have to uh, respect yeah, our, you, our you way have of to, life. Like, align yourself with the with the conservative policies. And um, but it really is happening. And we're the state that people are moving to because we have that economic advantage. We are a state that, you know, we're live free or die. And we, we, we believe that to our core. And that's why I'm running for governor, Caroline, because that's at stake. If the Democrats that are running, uh, either of them were to get in the corner office, we are one election away from becoming Massachusetts. But I'm not going to let that happen. I'm going to fight it with all my being. Yeah, it really is the last check we have when you see the crazy liberal policies coming out of Washington right now in the Biden White House. Kelly Ayotte, unfortunately, right. we have to leave it there. But thank you so much. Real quick, where can people go to support you and learn more about your campaign for governor? So thanks, Carol. I can go to Kelly for New Hampshire dot com. Kelly, F.O.R. New Hampshire dot com. Please join my cause. I appreciate your help and support. Thanks. Awesome. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks so much we got to take a quick break. What do you think of that? 844-500-4242 or 